This is the World Innovators Podcast with your host, Donna Peterson. Today is an exciting day. It is November here and it is crisp. And it's an exciting day because I'm going a little off course. Instead of talking directly about marketing and business growth, we're going to veer off a little bit and talk about mindfulness and how professional women can balance life with mindfulness. And so before we jump in, my name is Donna Peterson, and you are listening to the World Innovators Podcast, where normally I talk to business owners and marketing executives all over the world about how to grow their businesses. But today I am veering off, and my guest is Pam Wilhelm, and she's the operations manager at Boring Ingelheim, the pharmaceutical division. Welcome, Pam. Thank you. Nice to be here. and Great to see you, Donna. It's always good to talk to you. We've known each other for years. You know, we've both been in the corporate world, but then we've, you know, been seeing each other on the field years ago, watching our girls play. So it's always good to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk to you is because you've been in that corporate world for years. And I wanted to talk to you about women in the corporate world and why it's so critical for women in the corporate world to hone in on their awareness of their skills and be present in what they're doing every day. Yes, it's, um, we all have busy lives, busy schedules, and it's easy to become overwhelmed and even start doubting your ability, your decision making and your skills thinking why am i here do am, am, am i doing the right thing so it's important to give yourself a break and say well i've gotten to this point i must be doing something right and affirm for yourself that you do have skills and you can do this. And when the tasks are overwhelming, step back, break it down, you know, break it down into chunks and start with the easy pieces of that overall task. And once you start moving forward and completing the smaller pieces, you'll see, oh, I'm making progress on this. I'm almost done, and now I have a better vision of the end, wh what I, where I need to be, and I can complete the request or the task. You know, you're spot on because even myself, like everything I do, I always have like, I call my doubting Thomas on my shoulder saying, really, you think you can do that? I don't know, but you know, I've been doing this for years, so of course I can, but we all have that voice that makes us step back for a minute and debate instead of just jumping in and doing it. And so I think I told you the story recently where it was my niece and you know she was going to apply for a job, but she wasn't sure she should because she didn't have all the requirements, all 100% of the requirements. I'm like, just jump in, just jump in and do it because your work ethic alone you will gain those skills in a short period of time and the company will be so lucky to have you. And it's funny because women, we won't really jump in and apply for that job unless we feel 100% sure we can do it, where sometimes a man, you know, 25% and they'll jump in and they'll say, they'll apply for the job, which great for them. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, okay, we need to just jump in ourselves. Absolutely. Yep. And most often, you know, people want to work with you, whether it's in an interview setting or just on a project team or day-to-day -day colleagues, people want to work with you if they feel as though they can trust you, um, that you do have integrity, that you're accountable, you're reliable. And even though you might not have the specific skill or particular experience you you're you're you you being where you are today you've proven that you can acquire skills and acquire experience and apply your other qualities to 
get to that point and be a valuable team member. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So now you're just talking about breaking it down. Now you've had a very stressful job for many years. How were you able to break it down to determine your why and what keeps you going every day? Right. So um, a large portion of my job is compliance related. Um, I'm responsible for the reporting of data to a regulatory authority, a US regulatory authority. So with that comes a lot of anxiety. I can imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to get it right. And it's it's it was uncharted territory. So a lot was being developed, decided on as we went along. So once I got that confidence and and the um, the experience of just tracking everything, making decisions, documenting it, talking to others, um, and coming to a point where there's the the why. Okay, so why are we doing this? Why is this regulatory agency wanting this information? Well, they they want to reduce fraud and bribery and, and anti-kickbacks. So I need to be responsible for keeping track of transactions. And my guiding light is, okay, so is this something that's of value? Is it, um, if I record this, can I trace it? What's, you, you know, what's the justification? If we're ever audited, is it defensible? And do I have an appropriate audit trail that we can easily find the information? You know, why did we make this assumption, this decision, and we can defend it? And yeah. that's the best that we can do. That's, that's what we've interpreted the expectation is. Well, that's a very strong why. You know, you have a lot of people depending on you, and I can see why that keeps you go <laughs> using the word why again, why that keeps <laughs> you going every day to do your job, but do it accurately, you know, so wonderful. So my other question to you is obviously being in the corporate world for women who are either entering the corporate world or they are in the corporate world right now, is there a piece of advice you would give them? Well, getting back to, you know, don't doubt yourself. Know what you know. Express your skills and your experience. Be genuine. Again, people, when they're hiring or recruiting members for a project team, they want to feel as though I can work with this person. Yeah. You know, they're, they're good humored. They're honest. They're reliable. They have integrity. And Again, if you don't have the skills, you know, that's something you can learn. Yeah. But th those other, you know, those other soft skills, those personality morals, mm -hmm. you either have them, you struggle to have them, or you don't. And I think that's really important. Yeah, that, you're, I, you're, that, you're right. That is important because if you have those soft skills, you can learn all the other knowledge, but at least now you're able to work within a team. You know, you know how to be a team player or you have a great work ethic, which, you know, that's missing out of a lot of people these days is a good work ethic and being able to do it self-discipline, you know, especially with working at home. You know, some companies figured that out. Their employees can do it and some employees can't do it. They really need to be in the office where they're watched all the time. So that's a very good point of like jumping in and doing it. It reminds me of a movie Jim Carrey did years ago where he would just say yes. Anything that came his way, he just said yes, 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 he would do it. And then he wouldn't listen to the doubt. And of course, you can't do that all the time. But something to think about that, you know, if you're leaning towards it, just go do it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might be surprised where you end up. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So my last question, because I know you're very busy and I don't want to hold you too long. 
What do you do outside of work that relaxes you and kind of grounds you and brings you back to being Pam Wilhelm? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, right. I, I do have a passion for horses and um, they've been in my life since I was a little girl and I've been fortunate enough to be able to pursue a riding hobby and I I'm even looking to that's my my grounding you know I'm not able I, I have a horse at home and she's just a lawn ornament now mm -hmm. she's retired so she's not ridden but it's definitely nice just to go out there she's happy to see me I'm happy just to groom her which is very mm. relaxing and a little bit of exercise and then I'm fortunate enough to have another horse that I can ride a few times a week and that connection that nonverbal connection is is so important because it really makes you be aware of the horse you know you watch his ears you can feel him under you how he's responding. So it gives you, brings you into the moment. You really have to think about what you're doing, how he's reacting. And it just, you know, I, I come off and I'm just re revitalized. And then another thing that I've been doing, I've been volunteering with the horse, horse therapy organization. Oh, wonderful. It is. It really is. And they're working with veterans and um, um, healthcare workers and even Blue Star oh. and Gold Star moms. And it's the type of thing where you, you've probably seen articles and read articles and you're aware of locally we have um, little bridges for yes. therapeutic riding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is more, you know, on the ground and experiential therapy where you just you're just with the horse and again you're they groom the horse and they do m movements with them using their body language because the horse can sense your your anxiety if you yeah. have any okay. and if you're holding anything in they're 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 fight or flight animals right so they're going to be well you know what is Pam afraid of? You know maybe I should be afraid. Okay. So yeah. once you start calming down, you see them calming down. So you get that sensory feedback. Mm -hmm. it, it's really quite wonderful. So that's really rounding out my stress release well, therapy. A, a therapy for me as well. It's it sounds like it's good for you, but it's also good for others. Well, then yeah, and then that, that's always nice. Yeah. And, and the, the awareness part, I had to smile because, you know, you read anything about mindfulness and it's about the individual having awareness. And here you're able to learn even from the horse how to have better awareness for yourself through them. Mm -hmm. Almost as if they're teaching you. And what you're saying about the horse and the anxiety. Years ago, I taught swim lessons to little babies. So the babies were six months or younger. But if the mother was anxious, the baby then was anxious. Oh, sure, sure. And would cry and we couldn't put their head underwater. And, you know, six months old, they can swim. So we would drop the baby and they would swim. But that's another whole story. But it was the mothers who were calm and relaxed about being in the water that the baby sensed it. And those babies were calm. So just like you, if you're calm, then the horse is calm. Mm hmm yeah, it's yeah, you can see how it relates. Yeah, it transfers to people and interactions with people. So yeah, it definitely helps with my interactions with people. It def it carries over. Yeah. And grounding yourself just really makes you probably better at your job because then you're a little refreshed when you go back in and you go back where you're trying to be so stressful and so precise about what you're reporting. Right. Oh, excellent. Right. All right. Well, I don't like I promised I wouldn't keep you too long. I want to thank you very much for your time. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Yes. Thank you, Donna. It's great chatting with you. Yes. Thank you for listening to the World Innovators Podcast. For more information about today's topic, email us at dpeterson at worldinnovators.com or call 860 210 8088.
and please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode.